Okay, today I wanna to talk about how to protect your milk supply while also getting more sleep at night. So one major concern that a lot of moms have who are planning to breastfeed or who are currently breastfeeding is that they desperately want to breastfeed, but they also need sleep. Um, they need to get sleep at night. So we know that sleep is super important to mental health and just functioning on the day to day. Um, but we also know that newborns have to feed eight times in a 24 hour window. And if we divide that by 24, that's every three hours. And so that oftentimes leaves moms completely exhausted um, and just really feeling like they are not able to function because of this lack of sleep. So I have found the trick to getting moms to be able to get more sleep at night while also protecting their milk supply. And I'm gonna go into that right now. Okay, so having a good milk supply is all about supply and demand. So what does that mean? There are a certain amount of stimulation. By stimulation, I mean milk removal from your baby or from your hand with hand expression or an electric pump. But stimulation means milk removal. So you have to get a certain number of stimulations per 24 hours to put in the order for your body to make adequate milk for your baby. So specifically, in the first two weeks postpartum, you are in the transition phase of breast milk production. So you deliver your baby, you deliver that placenta, and your body gets the message that, okay, I need to start making milk. That transition is called lactogenesis too. But in layman's terms, what that means is that your body is transitioning from colostrum to making more mature milk, and that takes about two weeks for that transition to really happen. So during those first two weeks, and really even that first 24 to 48 hours postpartum, but definitely continuing through the first two weeks, the demand that you put in for breast milk is going to help set you up for a really healthy breast milk supply throughout your entire journey breastfeeding. So typically, moms wanna know, okay, how many times do I have to have milk removal in those first two weeks to really make sure that I have a good adequate milk supply? And the short answer is at least eight times, but really eight to 12 times in a 24 hour window is more normal for the majority of moms, um, depending on the size of your baby. For example, a baby that weighs five to six pounds is only gonna be able to take a smaller volume per feed. They need less volume in 24 hours because they are smaller. Whereas if you have a nine to 10 pound baby and you're you're really only producing you know, an ounce to an ounce and a half, up to two ounces in the first week or so, that baby is gonna need more volume per 24 hours to grow. And so you're gonna have to feed more often until your body kind of catches up and you have that supply that really matches your baby's need. But in here, I just want you to know that there is a magic number that you need per stimulations per 24 hours to make sure that your milk supply is in tune with what your baby needs. During the two to four weeks, you're in what we call the building phase of breast milk production and the supply and demand is still super important. Um, and then once you are past the first four weeks postpartum, um, you're in what we call the maintenance stage of breast milk production. Okay, so let's go back to the question. How do we protect our milk supply, but also get longer stretches of sleep at night? And the answer to that is, we're gonna trick your body into thinking that your baby is feeding at a closer interval than your baby actually is. So to preface this, I wanna let you know that you, if you want to have a full adequate milk supply with no concerns, meaning that you do not wanna supplement with formula in any capacity, but you want your milk supply to be completely in tune with what your baby needs. And that doesn't, that's, I'm not saying that that is the right way to feed. I'm just saying that if that is your choice, if that is what your goals are, then what I'm about to say is super important. So I want you to listen. If that is your goal, if you want your milk supply to be completely in tune with what your baby needs, you have got to remove milk whenever your baby gets a bottle. So that doesn't mean that you have to do it at the same exact time that your baby is getting the bottle, but we have to alert your body to know, hey, 
baby's getting a bottle, I still need to make milk. Because what can happen is if you give a bottle and you don't remove the milk, then your body thinks, oh, it's been, you know, this amount of hours without a feeding. For example, let's say your baby fed at 12 p.m. breastfed, and then your baby takes a bottle at 3 p.m., and then you breastfeed at 5 p.m. Your body thinks that your baby just went five hours without a feed, but really your baby fed at a three hour interval and so that's where the supply and demand starts to become an issue because what happens then is you get some engorgement, which is your body's way of kind of saying, hey, I don't need this milk. Um, I'm an, I need you to cut back that supply, right? So if you get that engorgement or even if you don't experience any engorgement, if you're not getting the milk removal in that five hour interval, then what can happen is your body in a 24 hour window is not making the same amount of milk because there was a less of a milk removal. So that's a really complicated thing to understand. So I'm gonna try to talk you through that to make it clear on how are we going to trick your body into thinking that your baby is feeding again at an appropriate time to protect your milk supply. That's what we're getting ready to answer right here. Okay, so I think the best thing to do is for me to just give you a real life example um, so that it makes more sense. So let's say that you are a breastfeeding mom or maybe you, this could also apply for a mom that is exclusively pumping or maybe you're doing a combination of both. But we know that if we can get mom a good four hour stretch of sleep and she can get through one REM cycle, then the majority of moms are gonna feel instantly better and feel more able to cope with everything that comes with the newborn and postpartum days. So I highly recommend you considering that when you are thinking about your postpartum plan and after your milk comes in, after you're out, the, out of those first initial days postpartum, um, this, this feeding plan can really be helpful for a lot of moms just to make sure that you're getting a good pocket of sleep. Now, I will say that Sometimes babies just naturally start to sleep four to five hours on their own after they get past their birth weight, and that can happen anytime between week one to two, and so you may not need this method. But for the moms that are not seeing their baby do that natural progression of a four to five hour stretch, this can be really helpful. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna breastfeed your baby around 8 p.m., okay? So you're doing a breastfeed or you're gonna give your baby a bottle and you're gonna pump at 8 p.m. when your baby's getting a bottle. And then you are going to help your baby transition to that deep sleep after that feed. So let's say your baby is asleep by nine and they're kind of transitioned into that deep sleep. You're gonna tag someone else in on your baby. So whether that's your husband or another family member or a night nurse or whoever that is, you're gonna tag that person in and they are responsible for the baby at this point. So whether the baby wakes up, needs another feed, whatever happens, you have passed the baby off around 9 p.m., okay? Between 9 and 9.30, you're gonna get your pump out and you're gonna pump, okay? So we the, the key here is that you have at least 60 to 90 minutes between one feed and the next and the pump session. So whether you're pumping to pumping or you're breastfeeding to pumping, we want at least a 60 to 90 minute window. 90 minutes is better, but 60 minutes is okay. And I, when I say a, 90, a 60 to 90 minute window, I mean from the start of the feed or pump to the start of the next feed or pump. So if you started the feed at 8 p.m., then between 9 p.m. and 9.30, no matter what time your baby finished feeding, even if your baby fed from 8 to 8.45, this you're still doing from the start to the start. So by 9 to 9.30, you are pumping again or you're pumping after a breastfeeding, okay? So we're tricking your body into thinking, hey, this baby is cluster feeding. Baby's feeding again. He just fed, but he's feeding again. You're gonna do a good milk removal and stimulation, whether that, I would, if you're not putting the baby to the breast, then I would prefer an electric pump, um, but you could do a combination of both an electric pump or a manual pump or hand expression. The, the point is, is that you're putting in that demand, you're removing a few ounces of milk, you're getting the stimulation to make your body think that your baby is feeding again, okay? So after that, then you're going to sleep. 
you're going to sleep in your protected sleep space, you've got, if you sleep with a sound machine on, whatever, you are going to sleep in a room that your baby is not in, somebody else has tagged, is tagged in and they are caring for the baby and you are going to sleep and you are going to get a good solid four hour stretch of sleep after that pumping session. So really it's going to be more like a four and a half hour window. Um, you have to be really efficient with the pump session. So, I mean, I'm talking like have your pump ready to go. As soon as you unhook, you are going to sleep. So kind of really prep for that and make sure that you're preparing so that you really have got a good solid four hour stretch that you're able to get some good sleep. Okay. Then when your baby wakes up sometime between, if, if your baby fed at eight, hopefully your baby will wake up and want to feed sometime between 10 and 11 or 12. But that feeding window, whenever that happens, the per other person who is caring for the baby, they're the ones that are doing the bottle. There's a lot more that goes into that. You need to make sure that it's paste bottle feeding. Um, we want to make sure that it's a quality bottle feeding so baby will sleep well. But for this video, I'm just telling you kind of how to organize this plan. So somebody else is doing the bottle. They're going to give the bottle, get the baby changed, burp, put back to sleep, get the baby to the deep sleep. And then they're going to come into your protected sleep space. You're hopefully in that deep sleep. Baby is in a deep sleep. The baby's going to be put down in the bassinet next to you. And then you and the baby are going to wake up when you get to that four, four ish hour, four to five hour, really. I'd say in the first two weeks, I want you to stick to four hours. Um, really, honestly, in the first month, I really don't want you going more than four hours, four, four and a half hours to protect your milk supply. But after the first month, you can stretch to five hours if your baby's not doing that. We just want to make sure that we're getting a total of eight stimulations in 24 hours. So let's, let's roll with four and a half hours right now for this specific scenario. So in that four and a half hour window, so you pumped at nine. So we got nine, 10, 11, 12. By 1230, you have an alarm set and you are waking up to feed your baby. Now, what if your baby just ate at 12? Well, then you have the choice to pump again or you can wake your baby up and do a feed there. That waking and doing a feed, typically I do not recommend ever waking a baby for a nighttime feed when they are past their birth weight and past those first two weeks of life. However, in this certain scenario, in the first couple weeks of life, this would be where I would say you, you make the choice. So if your baby is asleep and you don't want to pump, then you definitely could wake your baby up and just do a breastfeed, but you need that stimulation, okay? Because you have been four and a half hours without a pumping session. And so that's where we have that hard and fast rule. Let me tell you another option though. Let's say that you don't, you want to feed at eight and then you want to wait and pump until 10 or 10 30 and your baby doesn't take a bottle until 11 or 12, then you can extend that window. So if you pumped at 10, 10 to 11, 11, 12, 12 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to two thirty, your baby's getting a bottle at 11 or 12, then you guys are really matching up for that next feed. So I just know that me personally, like I don't, I want to go to bed before nine o'clock whenever I have had four kids, like those early postpartum days, I am ready for bed by nine o'clock. So I would choose the option to go to bed earlier and get my good four hours and then just wake up earlier. But you do have options. So just remember that in the first two weeks, four to four and a half hours is the longest I want you to go from the start of one feeder pump to the start of the next feed, feeder pump. Between weeks two to four-ish, you could stretch it to five hours, but you need to make sure that you're getting at least eight stimulations in a 24-hour window. So what that means is that you're going to have two feeds or two pumping sessions that are going to be more at that hour to hour and a half interval on the front or back side of that longer stretch. And then after you get past six weeks postpartum, you can really match up to what your baby's doing. But that's where you have a little bit more wiggle room and you could try and do more of like a five to six hour stretch of sleep if your baby is still kind of stuck 
in that feeding every two to three hours overnight. So there's lots of options. You just have to really protect your supply. And I think the point of this video is you can purposely get longer nighttime sleep as long as you are tricking your body into thinking that your baby is feeding earlier than your baby actually is. And that, that really is the key to, um, to making this plan work and really making sure to protect your supply. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll sure to check them out and um, answer them for you. Or if you have any other video suggestions that you'd like to see, I'd, I'd be happy to answer your questions.